Hello everybody and welcome back to the Japanese inspired picnic bench series. In today's video we're going to get marking and possibly even cutting some joinery. Let's get going. So I think with this picnic bench I'm probably going to start from the bottom up. We're going to join the foot to the middle leg and the outside leg and then we'll attempt to get that cross brace in afterwards. And the construction of this is going to be a mixture of bridle joints and mortise and tenon joints. And just so we're all on the same page, this is a bridle joint, this is a mortise and tenon joint and if it allows, I might even do a through mortise and tenon with a nice feature like that on top as well. And if you want to learn how to cut any of these joints with maximum strength with zero gaps, I've got tutorials for all of these plus many others on my free online woodworking school. There's a link to it in the description. No sign up required. It's literally a website. You go there, you learn, done. And so if you want to learn woodworking or simply take your current skills to the next level, the free online woodworking school is the place to be. Oh, and on a side note, those of you who are waiting for the cabinet project to continue, a couple of weeks, won't be too long. Right, so I've already shared my plan with how I'm going to mark this out, working from bottom to top. But we want to do this as systematically as possible. The last thing I want to be doing is moving that marking gauge around, changing that reference point, thus making joints potentially misalign. And so this joint here where the middle leg meets the foot is going to be a bridle joint and this one where the outer leg meets the foot is also going to be a bridle joint. The bit with this to take note of is that foot is a little bit thinner than the legs that are due to intersect into it. So it's going to be a bit challenging with the marking gauge to get it all central, but um, I think, I'm sure we'll figure it out. So providing I haven't lost it, I should have a mortise gauge and a thingy that locks them together. Which I knew would not be attached to it. Ah, wait, no, there it is. Yes. And so here's our mortise gauge, two rods that move independently of one another, and then we got this old little locky thing as well that goes on there, and we'll lock these at the desired offset from one another. So let's say we want that bridle joint to be, I don't know, what about 10 mil? So I roughly space these 10 millimeters apart, lock them together, and then, because we've got that change in thickness with the two different pieces of material, or the two different components, sorry, we can move these in unison, but offset from the stock differently. If that made any sense. And so what's important with this is that I cut out the correct parts of the bridle joint, because with this design, I want this line to continue down to the ground. I don't want this line to be visible because it kind of breaks up the whole flow of the design. So if we were looking at that here, this is kind of what I want that bridle joint to be. You see that line continues all the way down to the foot as opposed to being like that, where the line continues out like that. Don't like the look of it in this case, so we want to do it like that. And with bridle joints, generally you want the bit in the middle, the bridle, I guess, to be a third of the thickness or a third of the width of the entire joint. And so in this case, it's a little bit weird because we've got two different thicknesses. Which one do you divide into three? In this case, I'm going to divide the thick one into three, therefore giving me a larger tongue on here to fit into the cheeks. And so we're going to use a knife and a ruler to divide this into three and give ourselves two little marks at the top there and then use the mortise gauge referencing from the face edge to line up with those marks on the corner. And so for each of these components, let's get them all here ready to go so I don't miss any of them. Get them all lined up systematically, get a foot, and then I'm going to mark some like boundary lines on here just so I don't scratch that bridle joint all the way up the side of the leg. I know exactly where it needs to start and stop by having a simple line there where the foot is going to end. Okay, and then the next one we'll do is scratch this line on them by simply lining it up with the rod. And like, I, can, I can do this by eye at this point. This is only a rough mark. So just across like that. Looks about right, boom, and then I know it doesn't line up properly with the rod, but it's only rough. So the next one's going to be the foot, get that lined up here, and then roughly scratch on 
where that line is going to end up. And again on here, just eyeballing it. Now on this one, I've just got to make sure that I am actually doing it. Yeah, see, that's the wrong side that, so I need to swap that round. But this one on frame B should be correct. B8, yes, that's the correct curve there. Cool. Next one's gonna be the middle legs. Again, don't really need to use the rod for this. I can just use the foot as a spacer. It's just occurred to me that I can also do the top as well, because this is, this is gonna be a bridle joint as well. All right, so boundaries are marked. So now we're gonna use the marking gauge, or the mortise gauge, to scratch all the way around the tops, keeping within those boundary lines that we've just drawn on. Um, I'm going to quickly square it across the sides as well so I don't go all the way down there. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh. Right, and now we'll convert this pencil line into a proper defined knife line. I could have technically done this at the start instead of doing a pencil line, but Pencil's much easier to remove than a knife in case I got it wrong. So I'd rather just do it in a pencil first, get all the bridle joints scratched out and then refine those shoulders afterwards, just in case I got it wrong. So we'll make sure this is absolutely bang on that rod and I've got the wrong side. Let's not do that one. Let's do this one. Get that lined up. Okay, curves looking good. Lovely. And then without letting this move, find where that line scratched on the rod intersects with this. Do a mark there. God, this stuff's so soft. And a little one here. And let's do one at the top while we're here as well. And get the knife in that mark, square it down the side. I mean, I could technically get a square off the back edge and square it across, but I'll achieve the same result with a ruler. Now, obviously, when I'm doing this, I'm getting the knife in one mark, lining it up with the knife line on the other side, and then scribing it across. Okay, so that's all the bridle joints marked out with waist areas marked out as well. Now, we're gonna get cutting them out on the bandsaw.
Right, and then with all of those roughs on, yeah, it's time to start chiseling them out. Right, I think I've just found my new least favourite wood to chisel. This is disgusting. So this chisel is straight off the strop, proper sharp, but the fibres on this just cannot hold the shape while chiselling. Actually, it's slightly better while paring. Malleting down into it was worse, but look at the state of that. Not good at all. Oh, this stuff's so horrible to cut! Just be better. Ah! Be better. No, shut up. Stop crushing. Right, consider this my resignation from ever working with cedar again. No matter how sharp your chisel, how fine of a cut you take, whether you go for chopping or paring, this stuff just wants to crush. And it has done my complete nut in for the past hour and a half, or however long I've been doing this. I have managed to clean up all the shoulders and in the sockets and all that, but as you can see, there has been a few casualties. We've got a little bit of chipping here little bit of chipping up here as well. And by the time I got to the bottom of cleaning out these sockets, I just gave up considering even trying to do it clean. I just had to hack it out in the end. I mean, it's not pretty, but at least it's all hidden. So, uh, yeah. So all is not lost. I've just got to start working on the male parts of these joints now. Yay. So I guess the first thing I need to do is scratch the shoulders on this foot. Uh, and these are gonna be curved shoulders because it's where the curved leg intersects with it, which ain't gonna be easy, but we're gonna use the rod to help line everything up. Now I'm thinking, she's another foot as a support up here. So B4, and then we need B8. B8, there we go. Okay, and then get this lined up with the line on the rod. So one there. Right, and then with these knife lines, we'll square them round the sides. And then I should just be able to use those components again without needing to align them with the rod, because it's all a consistent radius, that is. But I can use that consistent radius to line up those two knife lines either side and give myself a shoulder on the opposite side. And then with those two bars locked together on the mortise gauge, I can slide the head independently while keeping that offset exactly the same and find the center of this board and then get band sawing after I've marked all the others out. So I do a point there, point there, try again from the other side and if they line up, nope. Point, point. So I'll scribe them all the way up to the knife line that we scratch for the shoulder. Right, so now it's time to start cutting out these male parts of the bridle joint. Now with this, I plan to set up the fence with the desired offset. Something like, let's say it's that. And obviously when I cut through this, this would be absolutely fine. But when I flip this round the other way, you can see by the time I reach the line on the top here, 
I'm going to be cutting beyond the line on the other side. So before cutting this, I'm going to quickly square a line from that one down round to the other side to ensure that I don't accidentally cut beyond it. All right, and there we go. Solid progress for day, whatever this is, of the Japanese picnic bench build. A lot of the joints are pretty much 70 to 80% there. We've just got a little bit of refining to do in the next episode. And then in the next episode, we'll also start attacking the mortise and tenons on the top here. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, if you want to learn woodworking yourself, you can visit the free online woodworking school, which is linked in the description below. We'll see you in the next one.